Squamish is a small town surrounded by mountains on the west coast of BC in Canada. Originally known as a logging town, in the last couple of decades it's become one of the top international destinations for adventure and extreme sports. I was attracted by the climbing, with many different styles such as bouldering, sport, traditional and even big walls. With my history as a deep water soloist, I was intrigued to find out what might be accessible by the ocean. Especially when my friends Jimmy Martinello and Trevor McDonald told me about a new crag they had discovered on an island in Howe Sound. Been going out um, on the Howe Sound since I just got out of high school and a couple friends had some boats so we were going out there and checking out the sea cliffs and three to five years after we were out climbing out on the house sound that we actually went around and got up close and intimate to the south side of Anvil and found this wall. I was so excited because I'd never seen such steep rock like steep granite and like cave-like looking rock and it's something out of like climbing in Thailand or the tropics and it was right here so close to home. When Jimmy told me about the cave at Anvil Island I was obviously intrigued. I'd never been out to Anvil. I, I don't think I'd ever paddled on the ocean around Squamish that far. And so we went and paddled out there one day from Port Oak Cove and got to the south end and and then kept going around seeing all this rock. And it was like, oh wow, this looks great, this looks great. And Jimmy's like, just keep paddling. It's a nice reveal, you come around this point and then it looks right at you and it was like, oh wow, it just it blew our minds, like we were just so excited. The potential at Anvil was beyond my scope, but from what I knew of Tim and like he was such a visionary in my life and an inspiration to me and I, I knew that Anvil Island was just like the perfect place for him. For sure, the biggest challenge about going climbing at Anvil is getting to the cliff. It's 10 kilometres from the nearest place that you can put into the water. And if you don't have a speedboat, which we didn't have for a really long time, the only way we could get there was on paddleboard. So it takes about three and a half hours to get there, and then three and a half hours to get back and quite a lot of the time we'd be climbing in the winter so it'd be dark when you left and it'd be dark when you got back as well so it's definitely yeah, a big mission. Big differences with Anvil compared to like Mallorca, Vietnam and the UK for sea cliff climbing is that it's much colder in the water like the water in the winter is like seven or eight degrees and the weather can change very quickly you quite often get these, these northern winds and because the house sound is shaped a little bit like a Norwegian fjord, it funnels the wind down across the water. So you can be on the back side of Anvil and it's really calm and then you come around the front side where you get trying to cross to the mainland and it can be raging like with really strong winds and very cold weather. One day in February, Bradford, MacArthur, and Jim and I went to Anvil. And we were pulling the boards on shore, and one of the boards got cut by a barnacle and popped. So, rather than freak out, we immediately decided to go climbing, because that's what we came there to do. Just before dark, we were like, oh, we better deal with this situation. What are we going to do? And we kind of thought about it through the day that we would build a raft. And so we were going to take two paddle boards, put them beside each other, then take the third deflated one and put it kind of in the middle and then lash it together. And then we decided to set out. And then as we were nearing the southern tip, we could tell that it was, that there was some serious wind. Bradford was in a dry suit. I was in a good thick wetsuit. Jimmy was in not the best wetsuit. Anyway, so we were like, well, we're not staying here. We're going to paddle our raft and we're going to get across to Lines Bay, and which is probably about 
10 kilometers um, southeast. Boys, brace the front of the board, there's a big wave coming. Watch out for the rocks! Just the hugest rollers you could imagine, and with the full moon, ice on the deck, like freezing cold. And that night was like survival for like, I don't even know how many hours. We got blown 15 kilometers to Bowling Island. And it was like nonstop action. If we turned the, the wrap that we were on, we would have got flipped over. And if we would have flipped over, that would have been, that would have been it. And when we arrived at the harbor, everyone was in the marina dealing with their boats and because it was just like the biggest storm of the season. Yeah, when Trevor got the boat, it absolutely transformed um, the amount of climbing time that we got on Anvil because we could go out there three or four times a week and just pop out there for a few hours because instead of taking seven hours there and back, it would take like 40 minutes there and back and we weren't exhausted so you could go climbing the next day as well. So when Trevor got the boat, it was so brilliant. I was really psyched. Since 2015, between Jimmy, Trevor and myself, we've established six new routes here between 5.11 and 5.14. Apnea is a very long route. It's got 20 bolts and it's incredibly steep. It's one of the steepest climbs I've ever done. The start of it is this amazing crack line that goes diagonally up the overhanging wall and the climbing is fairly chilled. And then all of a sudden you get these two really tough moves. And uh, the first hold that you go in off is like this sort of flared slot, which you get a hand jam in and you've got to try and hang that position and then reach up and get this little crimp and you get this thing and you have to like try and get it. Yeah, I couldn't really do it. So I ended up trying for a couple of years and I still couldn't do it. And I went to Spain and I was trying to climb Aravea, the 9A there. Came back here and I was in really good shape and uh, I jumped on it and I was able to do the crux. And then after that, you get a bit of a chill out underneath the roof. And then the next section is um, really gymnastic, very powerful, burly, upside down climbing. And the way you kind of start that is you have to do this like spinning pirouette move where you reach up behind you and grab the, this hold in the roof. And then you spin your feet round and smear them on the roof, like above your hands. So it's really strenuous. And then you kind of like moving across that, the holds get better but it's really overhanging and your feet are up by your hands as you're fully upside down. You kind of surf along that crack and then you get to this point where you get a finger jam with your right hand and you can clip and then you have to make this big span out to the lip of the, the cave come on, come on, come on. and wow. then you get a toe hook underneath and you pop into this hold of your right hand, it's really cool. And then you pull up into this corner and you get a really good rest. And then the bit of climbing after the corner is like by far my favorite. It's like, I think it's one of the best sequences I've ever done on any route in my entire climbing career.
Going to the backside of Anvil is such a special spot. You got this amphitheater, this cave that's just so impressive, climbing and hanging right over the ocean. And then there's all the sea life and, and wildlife all around you. And then you just, you're in this beautiful place. Like things we go to fly to go across the world to go climb, they're right on the south side of Anvil Island. And just hanging out with Trevor and Timmy, both of them are like such brothers to me. I just always feel like they got my back and you know, we could go anywhere in the world and like the support team that we have, we're, we're the three amigos, man. I feel like we could go anywhere and do anything.